Um, before I, I continue any further, what I want, I want to do is acknowledge another uh, very important person as well. Um, she is our national chairwoman to the National Committee, the GOP. Um, to many of us, she's been a mentor, um, guiding us along as we became involved once again in the party. And frankly, um, the party wouldn't really exist, um, especially in this area, if there wasn't somebody like Phyllis. And ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Phyllis. Phyllis! Woo! Um, so like I said, I, I didn't prepare any script, and everything that I'm saying is really from the heart. It's, and, and this has been a fun two years to meet all these people. And uh, the next person um, I was pleased to meet after the 2008 election, and we built the friendship up from there. I, I think the reality is, is that many of you, uh, maybe not so much tonight, um, how many of you find yourself often carrying a constitution in your pocket? You do, right? It comes in many shapes and many forms. And, you know, uh, the interesting thing about this past election was, uh, all too often, sadly, this became a prop. It really did. People would carry it when they knew that they had to carry it so that they could say they were carrying it. And other people probably realized that they needed to get a little bit better. And they did. They did what conservatives do, what Republicans do. We go out and learn. And they got better at understanding the Constitution and our founding documents. And then there are those people who just live and breathe it. The Constitution and the Declaration of Independence is so much a part of them that you can't see where it begins and where it ends. They speak these words, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and you know when you hear it, you know they are talking the gospel of their life. They that. live it and breathe it. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> they live it and they breathe it, and they know and they're so disappointed if our country, if our state, if our city, and themselves walks away from those principles. They, they, it eats at them. Sometimes too much, but that's a good thing. And I often say, you know, the founding fathers put pen to paper. Our founding fathers are not here anymore. They're not. We have these words, and we have to hold dear to these words. But if we can't have founding fathers, we can have defending fathers and defending mothers. And that's important. And this next person um, is as rabid a defending mother of the Constitution, the New Hampshire Constitution, and the Declaration of Independence. She shows more passion for our troops than I've seen anybody. And that speaks volumes for the character of who she is. She ran in the second congressional, and she lost. Um, but she didn't lose our hearts, and she certainly didn't lose the minds of the New Hampshire voter. Because in her, we all understood what it, was, what it really meant to be truly in love with your state and your country. And ladies and gentlemen, it's my ple ple pleasure, I'm almost choking up up here, Jennifer, um, to introduce you to a person that I consider um, a friend, a person I consider a patriot, and a person I can honestly tell you I love as a sister, Jennifer Horn. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank everybody for being here for Jack tonight. Uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, I am so glad I'm speaking before Jack. <laughs> I spent the entire campaign, everywhere we went, it would be Jennifer Horn, and, or Jack Kimball, and then Jennifer Horn. He gets everybody wild and screaming and shouting and clapping, and I'm up there, hi, it's me. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm really pleased to be going first, I got to tell you that. Um, you know, I just want to talk a little bit. Uh, Jack said, Jennifer, please keep your, your remarks under 30 minutes. So I'm going to try hard to do that. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about why we run. Because for me, 
Um, I thought when I first got into this that it was a little bit unique, that in my experience was somehow different than everyone else's. And as I've had the opportunity to get to know all of these great people who have run for office in our state, like John Stephen and Bill Binney and Jack Kimball and so many others over the last couple of years, um, I think that this is a shared, uh, a common, a common um, you know, inspiration for all of us. I truly got involved in politics because of my children. Bill and I have five wonderful children. I have four teenage boys still at home. They go to high school with John's daughter. And uh, my kids play football, his daughter's a cheerleader, and my biggest fear is that they'll start to date and I'll have to deal with John as the father of a girlfriend. So we've got to keep them apart as long as we can. Uh, but this is really all about our kids, isn't it? You know, I grew up in a family that did not talk about politics. But we understood about the American dream. And we understood what living in the nation of unlimited opportunity was all about. You know, my grandma and my grandpa lived through the Great Depression together. And after they got through the Great Depression, they never again spent a dollar they didn't have right in their pocket. They saved until, until the day they died. They had money in the bank. They literally built their business with their own hands. After the war was over, my grandfather decided he wanted to be his own boss, and he built a gas and service station. It was well before 7-Eleven was ever heard of. They had a, a little mini supermarket you know, attached to the front of it. And when we were kids and we were visiting Grandma and Grandpa, we had to take our turns out front pumping gas. My grandmother, grandfather, and my dad would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get the store ready, and they'd be pumping gas as people were heading into work before the sun came up. And my grandmother, until the day uh, that she retired, I think about 65, she was out there pumping gas at 9 o'clock at night. The most extraordinary work ethic I have ever seen in my life. They never asked for a dime from the government, not from their local, not the city, state. They took care of themselves, and they never expected that it would be different than that. They never thought it should be otherwise. And that's what my dad learned growing up. That's what we learned growing up. That's what the Republican Party is supposed to be all about. That's what the founding principles of this great nation are. When we talk about the founding principles, we're very specific. It's limited government. It is individual freedom and personal responsibility. And Jack gets that. Jack gets that like very few other people I've ever seen. When he goes off on his passionate speeches and he gets everybody on their feet, that's where it comes from, that deep understanding of what our nation of unlimited opportunity is supposed to be all about. You know, it's been in the news the last couple of days especially, um, this whole thing with the TSA, you know, the naked body scanners. I don't know if anyone's had to go through any of them, but I've seen the pictures. And uh, I'll tell you, even my husband has to buy me dinner if he wants to see me that way. <laughs> I, am, uh, I am not a fan of the naked body scan. But we can, that's right, laugh at the very thought of it, go ahead. <laughs> we can preserve our individual rights, we can preserve our civil rights, we can have the, the safest nation in the world without trampling on the individual rights of our citizens, without that kind of invasive, intrusive, big brother, or in this case with Janet Napolitano, big sister intrusion from our government. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's common sense, and we all know better. I am really honored that I ran in the, a, an election cycle with Jack Kimball. Jack, I, I think, understands, as so, this is something that I said on the campaign trail over and over and over again, what we need from our elected representatives are people who are going to stand and fight vehemently to protect the principle that the Constitution of the United States of America was not written to limit your freedom. It was written to limit your government. Right. Yeah. 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 And in closing, I promise I actually am closing, I want to, for those of you, I, I'm looking around the room, I think most of you in here are Republicans. Maybe we have a couple of independents in here. And I just say independents are Republicans who had their hearts broken. We can win you back. Um, 
but I think about why you are a Republican. As you move forward through the next couple of years, these great results that John talked about, with all due respect to the candidates who ran for office, we did not get these results because of our candidates. We got this result because of all of you, because of the people, the activists, the individuals who That's came right. to these campaigns, who brought their passion, who brought their love for country and community, and put it, put it into action. But I urge you to think about why are you a Republican? Because that is what's going to keep you engaged and keep you active in the years ahead. I am a Republican because the Republican Party was founded in the fight for freedom. We were, it was founded in the effort to free the slaves of this great nation. It was the Republican Party that stood side by side, by side with women and fought for our right to vote. And in spite of the Democrats' uh, cons uh, consistent effort to rewrite history, it was a Republican Congress that fought for years and finally passed civil rights legislation in the 1960s. The Republican Party stands for freedom. We cannot forget that, and we can, must be ever vigilant in our fight, no matter what we are, whether we are candidates, activists, supporting campaigns, we must remain ever vigilant in our fight to protect and preserve freedom in the United States of America. Thank you so much, Jack. Where did you go? I lost sight of you, Jack, for everything that you have done to fight for and preserve freedom as a vet, as a family man, as a businessman, and most uh, at the moment as a, a candidate for everything that you have done to fight for and preserve freedom in this country because that is what it's all about. Yeah. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you being here.